And a very special welcome to you from me as well. My name is Edie Lush and I'm the host of this particular digital stage within India Global Week. What an incredible response we've seen to Prime Minister Modi's address to us yesterday when he praised the excellent work of India Inc. in bringing India's opportunities to a global audience. And that global audience is exactly what we have with us here today. Over 10,000 registered participants from over 69 different countries tuning in to sessions about private equity, pharmaceuticals, the future of relations between India and the UK, India and China, India and Japan, and the United States. So today, we are talking about the future of mobility in a fast changing world. This is a very special conversation with Bhavish Agarwal. Now, Ola, of course, is a global force in ride sharing. Mobility and the future of cities in a post COVID world is something that is top of mind for many of us. In the wake of COVID-19, there is an enormous concern in London, as well as other places, about the safety of public transport, and in fact, how many people can get around in it. We've seen a reluctance to, uh, for people to get back on the tube here in London and in buses, and there is no question that ride sharing, along with micro-mobility and shared mobility in general, has a role to play in the future of transport. I'm really looking forward to this conversation between Shadra Sharma and Bhavish Agarwal. Now, Shraddha Sharma is the founder and CEO of Your Story Media, and that is India's largest digital media and education platform for entrepreneurship. So Shraddha, over to you now. Thank you so much, uh, Bhavish. Very excited, as always, very excited, very honored to be talking to you. Uh, you know, I have to tell, that in India, for most of the young people, when they think about entrepreneurship, when they think about starting up, they think of you. And what an incredible story you've scripted for all of us to look, to admire, to follow. I want to ask you that in our country, we have so many problems in India. How and why did you choose mobility? Uh, Shraddha, thank you. Uh, and it's always uh, wonderful speaking with you and this time, on a digital platform, uh, you know, many times we've met at this time with the first time on a digital platform, on a very important yes. forum actually, right? So the question yeah. that you asked about mobility, you know, mobility is actually such an important theme for human progress in general, right? Mobility technologies have moved human humanity forward since, uh, since uh, so long ago. If you think of the first industrial revolution, it was all about the steam engine and then the locomotives. And then from there we moved to planes, cars, etc. So human progress over the last many centuries has very, you know, very closely been intertwined with the evolution and the progression of mobility technologies. You know, the way we trade amongst each other as uh, citizens or as countries or nations, and the way our cities are designed, uh, everything largely depends, you know, sometimes we underestimate how closely mobility technologies impact our lives because it's, you know, we think it's all about getting from point A to point B. But actually, a lot of uh, paradigms around us are designed based on the mobility technology of the day. And, uh, you know, mobility technologies, be it the cars or the planes, etc., you know, these were 100-year-old uh, in inventions and technologies. And, yeah. you know, for a while, there was no real new innovation happening in the field of mobility globally. But in the last decade or so, you know, there's been a convergence of technologies and hence innovations in, uh, in uh, new age business models, et cetera, in this space. You know, mobility, computing, communications, all these technologies are actually now merging and creating very new paradigms, be it uh, what, what Ola represents to many consumers globally, which is shared mobility, you know, new paradigms in ride sharing, micro mobility, et cetera, or, uh, or be it electric mobility, autonomous uh, mobility, flying cars, what have you. So there's so much, uh, so much to look forward to when we think of mobility. And uh, you know, I, as an entrepreneur, I got into mobility, you know, fairly accidentally uh, through personal experiences of the inefficiencies of moving around uh, many, many of our cities. But once we, you know, uh, where, where we are today, when, when I look forward, you know, our ambition is actually to build clean, efficient, accessible and safe mobility solutions for everybody around the world. And this uh, mobility revolution is actually just getting started. And I actually believe Ola and, you know, in, in, in a larger sense, Indian companies can actually build the future paradigms around the world in the, in the field of mobility. 
Yeah, uh, you know, Bhavish, I have to say this, and for everyone who will be listening to this, you know, many people appreciate what mobility is. Many people have tried to build uh, businesses in this, but one has to give it to you that you know you started so small, uh, and 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 today the kind of business, the kind of space that you dominate in mobility, and you know you are competing. If and I don't know if you'll agree, but you're competing with the best in the world, and 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 you're giving everyone a tough time. And you launched in London uh, this year. So from an India Indian startup to now an Indian multinational, if I may say so, tell us <laughs> why and how did you? Yeah, you know, what does it take to make this journey, and what has been your learnings? Uh, Shraddha, it's been a it's been a very interesting journey. Obviously, uh, you know when we started off in twenty twenty eleven. We were a bunch of kids in a small room in uh, Mumbai, uh, sitting and dreaming about what all we could do, and not worrying about what resources we had. So from there on, in the first few years, uh, you know, we grew our core ride-sharing business across the length and breadth of India. You know, today we operate in about 200 cities in India, and we operate many forms of uh, mobility solutions. You know, cars, two-wheelers, three-wheelers, micro-mobility solutions, public transit solutions, etc., all across the board for the Indian market. But you know, about a few years ago, yeah. two three years ago, we were uh, we were asking ourselves that uh, technology is not about any single country, right? And if uh, India, being the hub of talent and being a large market in itself, can actually give us a springboard to take some of these solutions, business models, to many other parts of the world also, and build uh, build relevant solutions in those markets. So that's when we decided we will we would like to expand into some of our some some of the other global markets because our ambition has always been to build. Global solutions and build globally competitive businesses and global scale businesses, right? Uh, and in today's world, it's it's actually much more relevant if you're playing in the field of technology for you to build globally relevant and global scale solutions. So that's when we decided to expand our core uh, ride-sharing business into into uh, Australia, New Zealand, and eventually UK and London. And it's been quite an exciting journey uh, uh, in this kind of an expansion. Now, we were one of the few early consumer internet companies to go global in in a in a large format way, and uh, you know, we actually realized uh, consumers have similar issues everywhere. Uh, and if you if your core technology strength is uh, good, which act, being an Indian company uh, building an Indian technology stack is, uh, we, we are one of the best in the world. So you know, if you, if you are solving core technology problems and your business model principles are fundamentally strong, they would be relevant in any market. And we've had a great reception uh, in all of these markets. Uh, we've been able to solve local problems, and not just solve uh, from a past uh, perspective, but also move the industry forward globally. For example, yeah. uh, when I when I look at the future of ride sharing uh, in many Western markets, the conversation is actually about, uh, and especially more so post COVID, how can ride sharing contribute to a much more cleaner uh, environment? How can uh, ride sharing help? Uh, Evolve a future where the reliance on public transport might, for the for the short term, be uh, be less. But yet, people don't want to go go into personal mobility because that just uh, clogs the roads a lot more. So, a lot of new technologies and new concepts are still evolving, and we are driving those uh, those uh, discussions forward as a leader on the global stage now. Yeah, you know, and again, I want to say congratulations on London because uh, you know. Such an amazing, aspirational city, and it was so amazing to see Ola and 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 ho- happy Ola drivers. You know the last photos that we saw. So congratulations! But thank Bhavish, you so much. Today, yeah, but you know today, <laughs> unfortunately, we are talking in a time where mobility is has been hit and how, right? And and I want to ask you, what does it mean for you right now? Like, what does it mean now? What will it mean in the new normal and 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 in the world that we are going to be seeing? What, and how are you thinking about this? That's a very relevant question, Shraddha, and uh, that's a question on top of the entire industry's mind, right? See, in the short term, uh, the need of the hour is for citizens to shelter in place so that the pandemic can uh, get resolved in in some form or factor. Right? And across the across the globe, there are different ways and forms in which uh, it's getting resolved. But actually, the pandemic uh, puts forth the question and actually makes mobility even more relevant, because in the need for safe mobility is even higher in in times of a pandemic. People will, uh, when once uh, the situation normalizes a little bit, will need to move around. People need to move around to do their work, to to do local commerce, to trade amongst themselves. So the need for mobility is a constant, and the need for cleaner, safer, more accessible mobility solutions is actually even more relevant. So the onus is actually on the industry. Uh, 
to to build those kind of solutions build uh, solutions where the average citizens feel safe to get back going uh, and get to work to build solutions which are uh, actually cleaner since this has been a such a big disruption in our normal way of life uh, you know uh, the industry can actually take a take a very different path forward to a much more cleaner uh, climate conscious future and uh, move this uh, global industry forward in that direction and there you know we are we are seeing uh, conversations around the world in 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 this direction for example we are actually focused a lot on making sure consumers can trust ola to be a safe right to their work uh, and safe and a uh, healthy right to their work so uh, we we right we we launched a initiative called right safe uh, in the uk and yeah. actually across all our markets where we are investing about 100 million dollars to ensure citizens get a clean uh, you know sanitized fumigated healthy driver you know a ride which they can trust to be safe and uh, you know uh, and uh, get them to office without any major issues uh, so that's one of the initiatives we are doing another thing which we see happening in the post covid world is uh the future uh, there'll be a lot more uh, accelerated uh, focus on by by countries and by citizens to to make mobility cleaner and greener you know if you look at the statistics uh, about 20% of all global emissions are because of transport and mm-hmm. today the technologies around electrification are mature are getting to a point on the cost and technology curve where they can they can make business sense so we're already seeing uh, countries especially in europe uh, uh, you know the the european union even the uk uh, and even india actually uh, taking the lead to uh, to nudge the industry and also provide an enabling uh, platform for an accelerated transition to electric mobility so that's another area where we are also pushing a lot for the future yeah you know i know how passionate you are about electric mobility and and you know ola how you are ambitious ola is also ambitious in terms of the bets and the thinking that you've been making around and it's not now you've been thinking about it since last couple of years and 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 and, they, and i don't know how much i can talk about it but one big news which we were very proud of is that you went ahead and acquired a dutch oem right two wheeler oem and it's a very beautiful looking scooter uh, uh, company uh, tell us what's your ambition around this and can we say now ola is also an oem now and and what are you thinking how are you planning this new 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 foray yeah you know so the ola is uh, what ola is and what ola will be and oem <laughs> then the lines are blurred today between what an oem business model was etc so but l- let me share what how we are looking at the electric mobility opportunity right now mm. if you look at the world of mobility uh, there are different form factors of vehicles in the world there are the heavy vehicles the trucks and the you know the suvs for personal use and you know, much more so in the western world the large sedans luxury sedans and then there's a lot of vehicles which are two wheelers three wheelers small cars etc in the world and if you if you put yeah. a number on top of these right then the number of as you would imagine the number of small vehicles be it small cars two wheelers and three wheelers far exceeds the number of uh, large format cars sold in the world and far exceeds in total volume and actually total energy consumed also so mm. an electric future is incomplete unless you solve uh, from a technology standpoint and a business model standpoint this segment of uh, mobility so that's what ola is mm. focused on uh, uh, we are focused on electrifying the the small cars the two wheelers the three wheelers etc and uh, and in oh. this space we want to build technologies relevant across the world and uh, business models relevant across the world and our yeah. acquisition that you briefly mentioned is a is the start in that direction uh, it's a very very exciting uh, uh, dutch company which has built a, a wonderful very beautiful designed uh, and actually good technology uh, inside it also uh, two wheeler so we would definitely be launching that across europe and bringing that technology into india also and and going much beyond that into like i mentioned electrifying three wheeler mobility electrifying small cars so our ambition is to to make sure the the i you know the the world is not incomplete in terms of electric solutions you know just solving for large format yeah. vehicles solve for electrifying mobility yeah uh you know i want to again maybe maybe you answer but i want you to go a little more deeper on this that are you solving uh, you know the mobility solution is it for livelihoods or is it for lifestyle and and can we have both the product and service in the mobility space yeah I think that's a very relevant question, uh, Sharada. Uh, now, Ola, when we started, we started with a suite of mobility solutions, mobility services, yeah. right? And we built uh, the the four wheeler ride sharing, then the three wheeler ride sharing, two wheeler ride sharing. 
all those were built on back of the uh, uh, mobility uh, the, the transformation happening in terms of how people were consuming mobility and if i look out into the future right uh, the world will not just be only mobility services or only personal mobility it will be a spectrum mm. from transport to shared mobility solutions to personal mobility and uh, you know our mission is to build uh, the future of mobility for everybody for for a billion people and hence we actually will be building solutions all across these paradigms so on the shared mobility we're already one of the uh, global leaders we uh, we spoke a little bit about that but when it comes to personal mobility now personal mobility is going to be uh, uh, something that people will live with for a long time to come now they might uh, the, the the form the vehicles might become electric the vehicle designs might change over the years but all of us need the need personal mobility to get around and and have uh, economic uh, mobility so we are also focused on making sure we give access to clean uh, efficient and the safe personal mobility solutions and that's where the ola electric vision fits in how are you seeing the world babish because you had been in the trenches building this for last 10 years and you know take you taking ambitious bets how are you seeing the next few years and and you know we hear of flying taxis autonomous cars there's so much happening yeah. in the mobility space how are you seeing this space evolve in the if we have to hear from you in the next few years what do you see <laughs> So that I think this uh, uh, mobility is one of the most exciting industries for the future. Like I mentioned uh, uh, the mobility uh, space is is getting to a confluence of technologies be it computing be it communications or be it core propulsion technologies etc. And that's leading to uh, a whole new form factor of uh, how how we move around right. Uh, what has happened in the last few years was new kind of mobility services like shared mobility. what will happen many uh, you know looking forward will be you know there'll be flying taxis in the right in the right use cases there'll be autonomous vehicles in different use cases they'll you know all of these will uh, you know be uh, built on a on a base of electric technology you know it's hard to imagine a, a gasoline uh, autonomous car going into a petrol pump and <laughs> filling fuel you know, that's not it's not going to be the right so the, the base for all of these technologies in terms of propulsion will be electric and then on top of that you can have uh, you know a lot of these technologies in terms of like you mentioned flying cars now a lot of the technology might be early but uh, you know just imagine the kind of in infrastructure uh, investments that can save for a country like us if we can build yeah. uh, safe uh, drone solutions for uh, for goods or people movement now a lot of these technology is still early uh, but we definitely intend to play a big role in the entire spectrum of mobility technologies uh, and you know uh, one more thing i would like to say is the unique context india brings today uh, you know 20 years ago and it might have been still very different but today india is a place where there's a lot of talent uh, in terms of engineering talent entrepreneurial talent managerial talent there's a lot of energy because yeah. it's a young country and it's also a large market so you don't need to only think of india as a place you build technology for everywhere else in the world you can actually build large volume uh, businesses in india and then take those technologies outside india also which is the journey uh, we have followed so you know so the uh, the future from an indian perspective is also to like our prime minister recently said right uh, the atmanirbhar bharat which is actually about yes. india integrating into global supply chains and my own interpretation of that also is not just supply chains of the past but supply chains and technologies of the future so yeah. uh, uh, and and uh, this is one uh, industry where a lot of innovation will happen and you know it'll be so exciting to see if uh, india and indian companies can lead that around the world you know bhavish when you are saying this i just want to say that one very big shift i see in the last uh, 10 12 15 years would be that we have our young entrepreneurs like you if i may say so ambitious because at the end of the day it's the humans right like who use technology mm. and everything and we have people like you who are so unapologetically ambitious to create impact and to be you know to uh, to to have a uh, if i may say the front seat ride globally right and 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 that is one question there are two questions now i have as an indian today creating a world class business across the world what do you see are the opportunities for india as a country because again prime minister said something very nice in hindi is aapda ko avsar mein badalna hai so 
Mm. What do you have to say? And I want to ask you something very personal. That's the second question, and I hope we have the time to can finish. Is that if I have to get inside your mind, and everyone watching this has to, it. I'm sure this has not been easy time for you. This, I am sure, knowing you, you would be 24/7 thinking, planning, doing things. How do you build resiliency inside your own self as an entrepreneur when things around you are far more uncertain than you're used to? Okay, these are two. fairly deep questions rather so let me answer the first yeah. one the first <laughs> so the first question was uh, what are the opportunities uh, from an indian entrepreneur perspective in this changed world yes. right see i you know i think uh, just uh, like like our prime minister said that let's turn uh, this period into a period of opportunity right uh, now uh, the the uh, the, trans- the transformation of uh, industries across the world is only accelerated because of uh, this pandemic it has not slowed down technology penetration is only getting faster and this pandemic has given it a one time massive acceleration and uh, you know uh, i think this is the best time for indian companies and indian entrepreneurs to think global in their uh, in their you know aspirations and build for global scale build for global competitiveness and uh, and the world is actually a very uh, welcoming place to indian uh, businesses uh, you know our value system yeah. is appreciated by the world uh you know india in general has been uh, a very uh, you know indian businesses are well respected for the value system uh, that they uh, that they denote and uh, in terms of quality also you know indian businesses indian services indian technology is again well respected and this is also now the time where we can create a globally leading uh, consumer brands uh, uh, driven by technology yeah. and uh, if, if you, and if you look at uh, all kinds of industries around the world there are there are you know very very good companies emerging out of america there are good companies from other parts of the world also and i think india is at a, at that inflection point where we can we can build both uh, we can be a bridge between both the western uh, uh, style uh, economies and also yeah. the developing style economies because our values are yeah. very open and democratic and uh, you know our technology is uh, is is you know we we converse in english our technologies are very relevant in those markets also but also we understand uh, the the cost structures of developing economies we understand the consumer psyche of a of a developing economy so we can actually straddle both worlds and create large globally competitive brands and businesses and that's something i believe this is the time for all businesses in india all entrepreneurs to really you know bring on the energy and uh, and get going it's a tough time. Uh, uh, it's it's a tough time because uh, you know like you mentioned uh, i'm i'm segueing into your second question now uh, uh, that these are times when uh, there's a lot of uh, impact on many businesses economies will go through a tough time but there's always uh, you know we all know at some point it'll swing back up whether that will be a v shaped recovery u shaped recovery who knows and I, frankly i think uh, the details here are irrelevant the broader strategic direction is that there will be a recovery and if uh, you know uh, if we can be optimistic and i'm i'm an entrepreneur so i'm fundamentally an optimist shraddha like like you and like all of us <laughs> right so if we be optimistic it's very easy to be resilient if you just look at the future and hope uh, hope for a brighter tomorrow right and yeah. and prepare yourself when when there is an upswing uh, you will be ready to maximize uh, maximize and maximize the opportunity yeah but babish one question again i'm going to push you for this is that you know because we all don't get to get inside your brain because it keeps on functioning and doing new new things and big things and you know and and you come from a humble background you've come from a uh, you know like you dreamt those dreams and and you're making those dreams happen for everyone all of us see dreams all of us are seeing big dreams but you're making things happen uh, in a very competitive in a very global world tell me how do you process things to keep on moving forward constantly what do you do if people have to take something from you I think Shraddha, uh, you're being very generous in uh, your words for me. Uh, you know, no, I think I'm life is. No, I'm being very real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it starts with the. You know, it starts with just uh, having an unconstrained dream, and uh, and it's not just me. I think the entire youth of our country is very ambitious, and yeah. uh, the young people are what is India's strength and what will move our country forward also in every in every domain. And uh, you know, if you have a dream and if you are able to be. resourceful enough around yourself uh, like for example obviously I, we have a great team at ola which uh, enables you know it, it, my job is the easiest actually just to put something on the table and then everybody else has to figure out what to do <laughs> so <laughs> if 
we have a solid team which can uh, which can translate dreams into reality because ideas are in the end worth not much you have to execute them to make them real so building a culture of execution is also critical and actually in times of stress like this it is the excellence you build on a day to day basis beforehand which holds you in good stead and excellence around uh, doing the right thing for the customer doing it at the right efficiency and the right cost uh, focusing on quality all of those things in the end are very important and if you, if you are standing on a strong footing and a foundation for yourself then it's very easy to look ahead and uh, you know and dream you might not fulfill uh, all of them but at least uh, you will not regret not having uh, thought of those things <laughs> yeah 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 thank you yes agree and maybe we, we can have, get some news questions are we going to see more acquisitions <laughs> some music question <laughs> Well, uh, Sishadha, we're always uh, we're we're a fairly broad organization now, and we are present in two, three different uh, business uh, segments. So we definitely are always looking out for interesting companies which we can partner with, be it an acquisition, yeah. be it an investment. Uh, and we've we've had our share of strong acquisitions, and the most recent one was this uh, electric uh, two-wheeler company in the Netherlands. And uh, you know, we have a global perspective on these things. Uh, we definitely are talking. We keep talking to many, many companies all around. Uh, but you know, acquisitions make sense only when there's uh, either some strong technology we can uh, acquire, or whether there's a strong set of talent which we can uh, we can bring on board. And we've had successes uh, both ways. Uh, so we keep looking for them. And at the right time, we definitely will make some of those public. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> to a global ola story and to a very strong and you know and and to mobility and like you said to having to making mobility easy for everyone and i hope that ola continues to write an unprecedented story thank you babish thank you so much radha wonderful speaking with you as always